greetings. One of the topics that we always hear about in the news, it's actually an evergreen news item, is about how automation is taking away jobs and somehow this is always bad and somehow automation should be stopped as if the government can just stop automation. And there's so many things wrong with that narrative that we're going to peel apart aspects of that narrative and learn how to think about it differently and also how automation is your friend. In fact, harnessing automation can make you very, very wealthy. And I'll give you some insight about how to do that in this video, or at least how to begin to think about that if you're going to be an entrepreneur or even if you're an employee in a larger organization tasked with generating more output for lower cost. So we go to my Atom publication and we go to chapter four of my Atom publication, The Overlooked Economics of Technology. Now, as a video book, I also read out this chapter word for word in this video over here for those who are interested in an audiobook slash video book format of reading a book. But for now, we have this chapter four and I scroll all the way down to this chart over here and I click on this chart. Now this is a chart designed for a very, very, very mainstream audience. It doesn't even talk about AI or cloud-based computing or anything like that. It says robots. The probability robots will take your job in the next 20 years. So it is absolutely for a very mainstream audience who only thinks of AI in terms of robots. Now, of course, the more sophisticated reader will realize that most artificial intelligence is software in the cloud and is not partitioned into individual units so that you don't have one AI taking away one person's job. There is a cloud that automates millions of jobs. A robot is a physical thing that people can get mad at or they might see at a restaurant. And therefore, a robot is an easy thing to get frightened about but a physical robot is absolutely not where the bulk of automation of jobs can take place. But on that point, there are two other things wrong with a chart like this. Number one, it's only showing jobs that they say will be automated. It is not showing the jobs that will be created. Obviously, a lot more jobs will be created in software, in other areas of technology, just to invent and produce and productize the technology that would generate this automation. Therefore, to show the jobs that are going away and not the jobs that are being created is already dishonest. But then, as we say, the media's job is always to make you angry or frightened. They make money by making you angry or frightened. They do not make money by making you feel good for the most part. That was just problem number one and pretty obvious. But now there's a less obvious problem as the second one. Problem number two, look at the first five jobs on this list. Telemarketers, accountants and auditors, retail sales persons, technical writers, real estate sales agents. What do these five jobs have in common? They're almost entirely private sector jobs. There are no public sector jobs on this list very high up, only further down, like economists are a public sector job effectively, as far as I'm concerned, but only pretty far down on this list. The top target jobs are all private sector jobs, not public sector bureaucratic jobs. When in fact, artificial intelligence doesn't care if a job is in the private or public sector and it cannot be scared off or forced to comply with the government the way a human can be forced to comply with the government. So AI does not care about the things that can scare off humans and it doesn't care about what country the job is in, nor does it have a language barrier. Therefore, public sector jobs are just as vulnerable to automation as private sector jobs, perhaps even more so because government jobs, especially those of a bureaucratic nature, are perhaps very well formed, relatively low in productivity, a lot of duplicative work. Some of those jobs are of a make work nature. They would not exist if not for political advantages of those jobs being in government, things like that. So those jobs are in fact more vulnerable to automation perhaps. But for such a list to be created and have both of those problems I mentioned, only talking about which jobs go away and therefore people think that there'll be no jobs in the future at all. And to only scare private sector people, not government people, lists like this are just wrong, wrong, wrong and are why the average people have no concept and no comprehension of this issue at all and therefore are trained to miss the opportunities inherent to the creation of automation. Now here's the other problem. People are taught to think about the role of any politician, any government of society itself is to create a job for them. Most countries with elections, that's the primary issue of the election and most people only think of how they should vote or not in those terms. 
will they have a job for me if these people come to power or not? Is my job secure? The entirety of their understanding of the economy is do they have a job, do they not have a job? An entrepreneur, however, and I mean a real entrepreneur, not just some incrementalist quasi-entrepreneur who isn't really innovating, but just setting up the cosmetics of an entrepreneur without really being an entrepreneur. A real entrepreneur should love automation because they should look at a list like this and think about what business model they can produce from all this automation. Because what is the automation of a job? That means the employer, the boss, is saving all that money, not just the salary, but the benefits and all those associated costs as well. Therefore, if your job is automated, the way you should think, your immediate reaction should be, okay, so my boss is pocketing all this money. My employer is pocketing the entire cost associated with my employment. Let me immediately, without wasting a single minute and without being emotional about it, just start to compete with my employer or with my boss. Because every job that's automated means that that same amount of money is being saved and therefore margins are very high. I happen to know a number of companies in Silicon Valley that have maybe $10 million a year of revenue and only three human employees. Only three human employees because everything else is done by automation. And all those three human employees are very wealthy because they have relatively few people to pay so all that revenue can be shared among them and the profit margins that they can choose to declare to increase the valuation of their company are also very high. Plus those three can also go live in a tax favorable environment too if they want to and structure the company such that all the income is in a corporate tax sense and they just pay themselves a salary that keeps them in a moderately low bracket from a US income tax sense. All that's possible. But any job that's being automated means the employers of that former job are pocketing all that money. Therefore, those employers attract more competition, as is what happens when there is a high margin in any business. And therefore, there's further innovation to drive that margin down. Perhaps more automation in that process repeats, but society becomes more and more prosperous with each cycle. Therefore, as soon as you see a job being automated, think about all the money that's being pocketed by that employer. And the truly creative and innovative entrepreneur should look at a list like this and figure out, hmm, what type of business can I create that uses all this automation? Because now I can create a business that would not have been viable before because of all the payroll costs and now will be viable. If you have an idea that generates $3 million a year of revenue, but it costs 4 million, that's not a business because that's making a loss. But if automation enables you to lower that $4 million cost to $2 million, then suddenly you have a business that has $3 million of revenue per year and $1 million of that revenue per year is profit. That is a good business that you have created. So automation suddenly created a viable business where none could have existed before just because it changed the cost of generating that revenue and moved a lot of businesses that were not possible into the realm of profitability and the existence therein. And this even assumes just a one-for-one -one relationship between automation and the change from a loss-making business to a profit-making one. Technically, automation has even more elasticity than that in terms of the wealth it generates, but that is a topic for a more complicated and advanced video. And remember, we've been hearing about automation for so long, but before the COVID-19 crisis, in February 2020, the U.S. unemployment rate was at a 50-year low and about to go to an all-time low. We were hearing about automation, automation, automation for years and years and years before that, and yet U.S. unemployment rate was at a 50-year low in February of 2020. And even now, at the end of 2021, there are 11 million job openings that nobody wants to go to. I've discussed that in videos like this one over here, and I show you how to check on that statistic because there are 11 million job openings in the United States and a lot of people just don't want to go for those jobs. Yes, the employer can increase the salary, but there's a point at which they can't increase it because then the business would not be profitable and automation comes into that gap. But to believe that all jobs are going away because automation, then nobody will have anything to do, that is simply absurd. Automation always creates more jobs than it eliminates because that is the elastic nature of automation. The only condition is that the government should not make it too hard to be an entrepreneur. And that was the opening quote of this video, if you saw it in the very beginning. Automation always creates more jobs than it eliminates as long as the government does not make it too hard to be an entrepreneur. That is the single greatest condition. 
And that is why, despite all the automation that was going on, the U.S. unemployment rate was at a 50-year low in February 2020 and is getting back to numbers like that now, even as we speak. This is a crucial understanding in automation because people are always going to be afraid because the media makes them afraid. Automation is going to take away your job no matter what you do. That is the most evergreen thing that the media can use to scare people. And you have to learn to think about it this way. And that's why Silicon Valley entrepreneurs have made so much money when they succeed because they have automated something that was not automated before. And you have the numbers that I spoke about. $10 million revenue with just three employees. Therefore, all of those employees are very, very well paid. If you have a business that has $10 million of revenue, and in addition to yourself, you just have two employees, and one of the employees says that I want a 50% raise, you can say, okay, fine, 50% raise for you. There's only two of you anyway, so it doesn't matter, who cares? That's kind of what's going on in high-tech businesses, and when low-tech converts to high-tech, that is part of the after effect of that. That's why you get these unusually high compensation packages in tech companies, and not just for the people doing the extreme high end of innovation in software, but even their HR directors, even their accountants, these people are paid more in tech companies than they are paid in low tech companies as well, just as a secondary and tertiary effect of all the automation that they're proximate to. So this is some valuable food for thought, and I'm gonna have other videos about this as well, but do not by any means think that automation is bad and do not think that government should ban automation because number one, they can't do it. Number two, they should not do it. Any country that tries to do that falls behind very quickly because automation is also borderless too, by the way. The automation in one country can eliminate jobs in another country and often does. The US has lost manufacturing jobs to China, but China has lost even more manufacturing jobs to automation. So both countries have fewer manufacturing jobs than before, even though the dollar output of world manufacturing and of both countries manufacturing is higher than ever before and continuing to rise as well. So I want to conclude this video over here because otherwise it'll get too long. But if you find this type of content to be informative and thought provoking, then I encourage you to subscribe to this channel. And thank you very much for watching.